Vamos! Good bro! So today we're going to talk about when do you play soft from defense and and when it's a very good idea to play fast. Hello and welcome everybody! Today we are in Oosthout in Voorhout. And we're going to start right now. Vamos! Vamos Dio! Andiamo! From a skill from 0 to 10, how fast do you play in defense? Let us know in the comments below. Vamos! Give a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel, man! Be careful. Don't play the same rhythm over and over again. Because you're going to make mistakes by playing the same ball over and over again. If you are playing the same balls over and over again, your opponent knows what you're going to do and he will kill you or she. If you have loads of variation, your opponent doesn't know what you're going to do and he will feel a little bit more uncomfortable oh, because no. you change all the time. So if you play fast then slow, then they don't get into a nice rhythm. So when do you play slow? In some situations it is very, very important that you play slow. Um, and there are situations where you can play slow and fast. But let's start with the situations that you should play slow. Without the wall, you can have a slow rhythm. So slow on the feet, slow on the feet, slow on the feet. Because the, the main goal of the defender is that they give a ball that is lower than the net. So the net player hits the ball lower than the net and they can never attack you. So a reason that you feel stressed on the court might be that you're playing fast. So you get a fast ball back and then you are stressed. If you play slow on the feet, you will have way less stress and everything is easy and you win the point. You win the game, you win the match, and you win the tournament. Vamos! When you play the Chiquita, it is very, very important that you play slow. Because when you're going towards the net, and your opponent has a higher contact point than the net, he will kill you. So, especially in the Chiquita, soft on the feet. So you also win time to go to the net. If you play fast, your opponent has a high contact point and you don't have any time to go to the net. When you play an angle, so when I'm on the right and I play to the fence, it is very important to play slow because otherwise you might play the ball out. This is especially when the ball is medium high. When the ball is high, you can make the angle. So it, it really depends. But if you make the angle, it's better to play slow. Specifically play slow when you're playing against good tennis players because tennis players like to have speed. They like to play with speed, with power. So if you give them power, they're going to murder you. So try to play very, very slow on the feet. But if you give a, uh, them a contact point that is lower than the net, they cannot score with the volleys and they will lose their minds. And the match and the tournament. Quit bra. When you play the lop, you should also play slow. The lop is not a shot. It's a push. PUSH! Try to push the ball slowly upwards. If you hit the lop, then it's probably going to be out and you have way less control. So with the lop, especially, it's important that you bring the ball all the way up and that you end with your racket all the way there. A slow and long motion also gives a certain amount of speed. 
a short and fast motion gives a certain amount of not, contro not controlism. I normally call that the uh, prepara the spaghetti that you're playing with your wrist too much and then it becomes like spaghetti that you, that you, you cooked. That is like, bloop, bloop, bloop. that's a little bit of a wrist action. I think that it's complicated for players that played badminton or squash. They have to use their wrist a lot and it's mostly a longer motion. Um, so oh, it's important to maybe experience and also when you're warming up to do a slower motion but make it slightly longer if you feel like you're playing too fast. Give a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel, man. We want to have 12K subscribers at the end of the month. Vamos! When the ball is high with the bajada, I suggest that you watch how close or how far your opponent is to the net. Because if your opponent is far from the net, there is space on the feet. So then it could be a very good option to play softer to get it more down. If your opponent is very close to the wall, if you play soft, they will kill you. So then you will kill them by playing a bajada that is very, very fast. So looking where your opponents are positioned is very important to know. Also, your compañero, your partner, could say, close to the net, Peter is close to the net. Yeah, then you know, kill Peter. Uh, Peter, Peter, half, Peter is behind. Then you know you can play softer and take less risk. Also, when you're coaching your partner, don't say, he's close to the net, because, oh, you get stressed straight away. You go, you can, you can do it. Oh man, that's too stressful. Relax, talk to your compañero softly. They are very close to the net. They are halfway there. They are at the back. No worry, Tio, you can do this. Vamos. So when do you play fast from defense or fast, depending on where in England you are from? So if you have a high contact point, you can play fast because you can play the ball down. So the main thing is, as you said in the beginning of the video, the net player should have a contact point that is lower than the net. So if you have a high contact point, you can bring the ball down and it's impossible when the ball is low to give them an, a, a ball that is very low. Because if the ball is low, then also you have to play fast. Maybe this surprises you, but sometimes on high level games, when you are in trouble in defense, you have a very low contact point. If you play that ball slow, the player, the net players will come pushing forward and they will kill you. You can play fast when your opponent has a bad folly. And that's specifically the Eastern forehand grip with the forehand and with the backhand. The stance of the racket, the face of the racket, is open. So if you play fast, the ball will go up and they can never bring the ball down. Also, this eastern forehand grip, I'm not saying that you have bad volleys, but especially low volleys are difficult as well. Because now the racket face is really, really open. It's quite hard to get the ball back. This especially works well uh, to people that are not tennis players. So yeah, it doesn't work well if they are like this to the net. Then you have to play more lobs. In my opinion, Padel gets faster and faster and faster. Players are going to hit more often. So it's going to change if you watch LeBron and Galan play together. They're going to play with more topspin. And especially, um, this is something that happened to me in a match. I was playing against Italy for Holland and they were playing super fast to my body and because they played right into my body I couldn't um, get the folly with slice and effect to keep the ball low and that change that cost us the, the match just because they play super fast to me I couldn't push through the ball to give that extra slice so a fast ball to the body especially in the body is super uh, it works super well if you play into somebody's hitting zone then it doesn't work well because then they can push you and they they can 
win uh, all of the matches, of course. So if you play fast, to the body works quite well. But it has to be in the body. If it's not in the body, so if you don't have that, um, that precision to play here, but the ball comes slightly there, that's the difference between losing and winning the point. And I feel like everybody's playing quite fast at the moment. Um, so play slower balls and learn to adjust depending on the qualities of your opponent. So when you're warming up, try to watch very carefully on what they are doing. Uh, where are they positioned? Positioning is the most important thing of paddle and then the technique will come. So if you see that they're close to the net, play lobs or play, pl play fast to the, to the body. When they're further away from the net, play slow so they have to come forward and then play the lob. Thank you everybody for watching. And please, it helps us a lot that you share some of the content, that you like some of the content and that you watch the entire ad because that also helps us to grow the channel a little bit because we earn some money on that. So uh, skipping the ad is okay. I can understand that it's incredibly boring, but it, it helps us to grow the channels. Thank you all for watching. Hasta luego. Ciao. Adios.